Earthquakes are one of the most powerful and violent forces on planet Earth, and they affect people in many places around the globe. Today we're going to show you some simple experiments here in the kitchen that will demonstrate what an earthquake is and how its effects can be very devastating to buildings and bridges, things around us. First thing that we're going to do is make some gelatin. Now gelatin, when you boil water and you mix gelatin in, it dissociates into the water. And then when we cool it down, it actually forms a jiggly solid. It's something between a solid and a liquid. Solids behave a little bit like that during an earthquake. And so we're going to make this gelatin and use it to demonstrate what happens during the various phases of an earthquake. So the first thing that we want to do is boil some water, stir our gelatin in and get it completely dissolved. Take this over here. Stir that a little bit, mix it up really well. So we want that gelatin to be really evenly dispersed. And start to cool that fluid down. And what happens with gelatin is gelatin has very loose bonds, if you will, because there's a lot of fluid in the way. And so it behaves a bit like a solid, but it behaves like a liquid too, because the atoms are not so well connected that they make for a rigid solid. So over time, as the heat escapes this fluid, those atoms will grow closer and closer together until they loosely bond, forming our gelatiny, bouncy, jiggly material that we're used to. So we'll just go ahead and pour this into this glass container so that we can see what's going on. And we'll have a nice green layer of rock here once it cools. And again, we'll take this and put this in the refrigerator, and then we wait. So our gelatin is ready now, and what we've done is we've sprinkled a little powdered sugar in grains of graham cracker across the top. And we've done that to represent the fact that this represents a body of rock, and that rock is made up of distinct particles. And each of those particles moves independently of each other. You can think of a rock or any solid as a really slow flowing liquid in the fact that it can still move under certain conditions and at very long time scales. Having said that, what we're going to do is show you the different types of waves that occur in an earthquake. Because we need to understand a bit about an earthquake and how it occurs in order to understand how it destroys. So the first type of wave in an earthquake is called a P wave, a primary wave. And the primary wave is a compressional wave. And what that means is it's the fastest wave and the particles actually move back and forth in the direction that the wave is moving. So we're going to assume that in this case, the energy is moving towards you and we are going to move back and forth this way. And each of these little rows of particles are bouncing back and forth because the particles between them are actually moving close together, far apart, close together, far apart, okay? And we can actually view this happening in real time. This is exactly the kind of fast wave that occurs in hard materials. Now, the second type of wave is called a shear wave or an S wave. And a shear wave is an up and down wave. Think of it like a wave on the ocean, okay? And so if we pick this up, and do it up and down, we get a different style of wave. Now, one interesting thing about an S wave is it doesn't shear in fluid. What that tells us is that if a wave moves through water or a liquid, it is absorbed, so we don't actually see it. This is how we know that there is an outer core, center of the earth, that's actually liquid metal, because those shear waves actually can't penetrate it, they're absorbed. And so the fact that we don't see them on the other side of the earth tells us we know we have a liquid outer core. But that the earth's surface is pretty well solid. And so this up and down sine wave or beach wave type of pattern occurs and you can see it bouncing the particles up and down and back and forth. And the particles are actually doing something like this, rolling forward. The third type of wave is the slowest wave. There's actually two types. One is called a love wave, 
And the love wave occurs when things go side to side. And this is a very destructive wave. And you can see that, again, it wants to rotate. And there is actually another type of wave called a Rayleigh wave. Okay, and the Rayleigh wave occurs as this goes up and down. Okay, and it's really hard to do. So there's all sorts of waves passing through the rock in different directions at different speeds occurring at different times. This makes it difficult because any object sitting on this doesn't like waves passing through causing stress and strain in different directions. It's very difficult to engineer a building that can withstand those kinds of pressures. You can see how much these particles were jiggling around. To test that idea, we're going to build a little house and graham cracker and icing, and then we're going to place it right here on this little graham cracker pad that we've built. And we're going to see if we can destroy it using P waves, S waves, and surface waves, like Love and Rayleigh waves. Okay, we're going to basically apply all of these different types of waves to this structure built on this pad. And we're going to see how long it takes for this thing to fall apart. We'll first apply our P wave. You see the building starts to rock back and forth. Okay, and then that passes, and then not too long after, it becomes our S wave. Okay, and that kind of bobbles it up and down. The most destructive waves, again, are those surface waves, the Love wave and the Rayleigh wave. And here comes that. Oh, it really starts to twist it. <laughs> it's bouncing off its pad. Okay. Oh my gosh, it's... Uh, at this point, any normal vessel would probably have dis been destroyed, but this one is built by a very nice engineer, and it's only rolled off its pad. But then again, gelatin's a pretty soft material. But the point is, is if you live in an area that has an earthquake, and you build a structure on a substrate that goes through this stress and strain, you should appreciate the fact that sometimes they don't always hold up, and they certainly don't always stay in the same place. Mm -hmm.